Hi, I'd like to tell you um, about types of charge, polarization of charge, and charging by induction. Okay, so there's two types of charge, as you, you've learned already, probably in biology, chemistry, and any other physics class you've taken, and that is you have positive charge and you have negative charge. It turns out that um, two positive charges will repel one another, two, uh, two negative charges repel one another, and a positive and a negative charge attract one another. Um, protons carry the positive charge and electrons carry the negative charge. The protons are in the nucleus with the neutrons and the electrons are in the outer parts of the atom and as I said they're negative. Alright, so um, let me just show you uh, something about polarization. If you have an atom that has um, the electrons on the outside of the atom and um, the protons in the middle of the atom, then the center of the positive charge is right there. I'll show you again, it's right there. But the center of the negative charge, if we wanted to say where this all, all of this negative charge is centered, we'd say it's, again, right there. So they both have the same center of charge. And we'd say this is neutral. meaning it doesn't have any charge. Okay, well, same atom held fixed in place, and we bring a negatively charged object. We won't um, tell you how it got charged, but we'll just say it's a negatively charged object. It has, what we mean is it has more electrons and protons. That's what we're, that's what we're saying. And so um, that negatively charged object is going to push on this electron cloud, and it's going to shift it over a little bit if this is not a metal. If this were a metal, some of these electrons might take off. But if this is if this is an insulator, let's say rubber or wood or paper, then when this comes into the region, it does shift this cloud a little bit. See how it's shifted over? It's not in the center. And so the, the center of negative charge might be like right there. And the center of positive charge is right there. And so um, it's no longer um, like the old atom where the both were in the same point both the electric the negative and the positive charge were in the same center and so um, this is actually going to be attracted then to this thing and so um, and the reason for that is because the positive charge is a little closer to these negatives than the negative charge is and they're the same magnitude so the positive being a little closer there'll be this net force to the right on here and there'll be a net force on here to the left. This will be pulled a little bit that way. Now you might say, aren't these negatives pushing? Yes, these negatives are pushing, but these positives are pulling and they're attracting this and they're closer. So that's how that works. We say this atom is now polarized. It has no net charge, but it is able to pull on there. Okay, again, Let's say we have a metal sphere. If you have a metal sphere right here, and you bring a negatively charged object here, then um, what will happen is in the metal, these electrons, this isn't an atom now, this is, a, this is a big metal sphere, and what will happen is these electrons will push the valence electrons in the metal over here. Not all the electrons will go over there, but some of them will. Leaving um, what were neutral atoms, they're going to make them now, they'll be a, have a slight positive charge. And these being closer to the negatives, there'll be a bigger force this way. Then, of course, these negatives are being repelled, but it's a smaller force. So whenever you bring a neutral object close to a charged object, there's always an attractive force. It's, it's never repulsive. It's, it's attractive. If it's a neutral object, it will be attracted. If this were positive, then the electrons would have come over here, leaving this side positive, and this would have been, again, an attractive force. Okay, moving right along. Okay, I want to show you how to charge by induction. If we want to charge by induction, then um, if this is a metal sphere, so this is metal right there, metal, and this is a this is rubber or wood or something. This is an insulator. 
That's an insulator. Metal and an insulator. And let's say this is neutral right now. Okay, so it's neutral. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring um, a wand in here and let's make this a positive wand. So what will happen is the um, electrons will be pulled over to here, leaving this side slightly positive. The positives don't move on here. It's just the electrons that move in the metal. So this will be slightly positive. Will all the electrons come over here? No, just some. Okay, so there we have it. Now, if when, when we're doing that, if we have our positive charge here and the negatives here and the positives here again, if we go ahead and ground this side, we connect this to ground, which means we just give it a path for either the electrons to leave or electrons to come onto the thing. Electrons from the ground will come up and they'll neutralize these positives. So the electrons will come up from the ground and neutralize these positives, so we'll take them away. So what we'll have over here is, once they do that, we'll just have negatives here. Okay, now if I pull the if I if I pull the ground away first, so let's cut the ground. We're going to cut it, so it no longer has a ground. And then I remove the negatives. Then what will happen is these electrons won't have any reason to stay here anymore. They'll actually spread out. So we say that we have a charged object. This was called charging by induction because we induced. We cause the electrons to get induced onto here. Notice that the object that we used was positive, but we left a negative charge. When you charge by induction, you always charge opposite to whatever um, in, whatever object you use with the charge on the object you use. So if this were positive, then this is going to be negative. Okay. Let's see that one more time with a negative object. How does that work with a negative object? Okay, so we have our insulator, and um, let's bring the negative here. That's going to push electrons over here, making this side slightly positive. Okay, now if we ground this, if we ground that, now these electrons, um, they would like to get even further away from here. So they actually go into the ground. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to um, pull the, the grounding thing away. So we take the grounding thing away and we're left with this. And now when I pull the, the negative strip away, these um, now these positive charges are going to spread out, but this is how they're going to spread out. It's not like that that's going to move over there. It's that there will be an electron over here. There's electrons in here still. And when the electrons see these positive charges, they'll come over here and fill one of these, which makes this slightly positive. So that's how the positives actually move. It's really electrons going over here, leaving a positive over here. So what will happen is this charge will spread out. And again, notice that we have um, charged something positively with a negatively charged object. Okay, that's charging by induction.